Sometimes, one fight is all it takes to put any bad blood to rest. Shots are exchanged, blood is spilled, and by the time the final bell has sounded, neither fighter has any reason to continue hating the other. But that's not always the case. Now, without further ado and ranked in no particular order, here are 10 grudge matches that didn't sell the beef. Number 10. John Jones vs Daniel Cormier John Jones and Daniel Cormier had one of the fiercest rivalries in MMA history. Not only did their first fight end on a sour note, with Jones prematurely celebrating and taunting his beaten opponent directly after, but their second fight, which should have brought us a proper conclusion, was sadly overshitted out due to Jones failing a drug test. And at this stage, with all of the heartache, disappointment, and pure fury, it'll probably never be fully resolved. Number 9. Ronda Rousey vs. Maisha Tate Sore winners can be just as bad as sore losers in certain cases, and for Ronda Rousey, her inability to handle defeat was only made worse by the fact that she was a terrible winner as well. Her old rival, Misha Tate, was unable to get the victory over Ronda in the Strikeforce promotion, and when the time came for their rematch in the UFC, it seemed like their relationship was in a pretty bad place, especially after the time spent as coaches on the Ultimate Fighter. As expected, Ronda's armbar mastery proved to be too much for Misha Tate, earning a third-round submission victory. But when the time came for the two to shake hands, despite Misha's best efforts, Ronda refused to bury the hatchet. Sure, this was just as much of a heel move as many of us would expect, but in hindsight, it really doesn't paint the best picture of Ronda as a competitor. Number 8. Kate Gillishaw vs. Cody Garbrandt These old teammates were thick as thieves once upon a time, but like the majority of Team Alpha male members, T. Gillishaw's exit from the Sacramento gym left any past relationships he might have had in a very tense place. The most exciting prospect to emerge from that gym, Cody Garbrandt, eventually went on to win UFC gold for the team, and for Dillashaw. This made Cody his prime target. So when the two eventually met at UFC 217, the stage was set for one of the best grudge matches of the year. The fight itself was just as good as advertised, and both men had their moments, but in the end, it was Chase's durability and sniper-like precision that got him the finish. As soon as the referee pulled him away, however, he immediately jumped into Cody's face, roaring at him in celebration, clearly venting after all those months of buildup. As you might expect, the USC jumped on this lack of resolution and booked a rematch. And things were just as heated as ever coming into round two. Once again, Dillashaw got his hand raised, but don't expect to see these two hanging out anytime soon. Number 7. Michael Bisping's Luke Rockhold Michael Bisping and Luke Rockhold had very little common ground between them during the years they spent as rivals within the middleweight division. Bisping came up short by quite a lot the first time around, as Rockhold dominated him in every facet of the fight, knocking him down before submitting him with relative ease. But when the chance came for the Count to take his revenge, he took it in the most embarrassing fashion. With Rockhold as the champion, Bisping stepped up on short notice and produced one of the most dramatic upset victories in UFC history as the underdog knocked out the overconfident champion in the first round. The win was so remarkable that Luke Rockhold was reminded of it several times during the post-fight press conference. Sure, these two eventually made up, and even trained together on occasion, but their rivalry was pretty tense while it lasted. Number 6. Brock Lesnar's Frank Mir Brock Lesnar isn't the type of guy you want to make an enemy of, but when you're a heavyweight legend and former champion like Frank Mir, it makes very little difference. After welcoming Brock Lesnar to the UFC and eventually tapping him with a come-from-behind submission, the rematch stood as a major coming-of-age moment for the inexperienced Lesnar as he pummeled his way to a victory, earning his first title defense and then yelling in Mir's face after the bout. But if you thought that his post-fight interview would be anything less than a full heel turn, think again. There was something in there about Frank Mir, a horseshoe, Bud Light, and his own dear wife, and if you haven't seen it, we recommend checking it out in full. Number 5. Charles Sonnen's Wanderlei Silva These guys had a beef that went on for years before they finally shared the cage. Injured by comments that Charles had made about his home country of Brazil, Wanderlei Silva tried to make Sonnen apologize before agreeing to coach opposite of him on the ultimate fighter. However, that failed and the pair engaged in a fight on the spot, jumped forward a number of years later. And these two finally got their chance to settle their differences. After surviving an early knockdown, Chol went on to dominate and win the fight on the scorecards, but even with this resolution, Silva shoved Sonnen directly after the matchup, proving that some cuts run too deep to be fully resolved. Number 4. Ben Askren's Georgi Masvidal Right from the start, it was clear that Ben Askren and Georgi Masvidal were never going to get along. 
One make his name as a street fighter in Miami and prides himself on a set of morals and values that likely differ from most people. The other is Ben Askren, a guy who prides himself on his intelligence and roasting people that he feels are beneath him. Safe to say, this wasn't a good mix. So, in Mass Vital Flatline, Ben Askren with a 5 second knockout. He made it clear that nothing had changed. He still doesn't like Ben and his taunting of the former, unbeaten wrestler proved as much. Even Askren himself was forced to admit that he'd been caught with a perfect shot. Though he still backed himself to beat Georgie 9 out of 10 times, there's no arguing with a shot that clean. Number 3. Colby Covington, Georgie Masvidal Old friends often make for the worst enemies, and when it came to Colby Covington and Georgie Masvidal, these former teammates gradually saw their relationship descend into something quite ugly. And when both guys started talking smack in the media, it was clear that we would eventually get a fight between them, which Covington ultimately won in dominant fashion. Not only did the two continue to exchange words once the bout had concluded, but Georgie even assaulted Colby on the streets just a couple of weeks after their fight. Anyone who thought that may have exaggerated their disdain for one another couldn't have been more wrong. Number 2. The Simporia is Conor McGregor 3 The long-awaited rematch between Dustin Poirier and Conor McGregor was an incredibly peaceful number 2 matchup that sat between two insanely fiery affairs. The third fight in particular saw Conor massively turn up the heat, and by the time they reached the cage, these two were very clearly ready to kill. Unfortunately, a horrific injury to McGregor's left leg left us without a proper conclusion to the trilogy. And given the final scene we got during Conor McGregor's post-fight interview, it's a very clear indicator that these two are still nowhere near through with one another. Number 1. Khabib Nurmagomedov, Conor McGregor And finally, we come to the one that will probably never be solved. The rivalry that went deeper than any other mentioned on this list. Lines relating to culture, family, religion, and more were crossed. And by the time Khabib Nurmagomedov and Conor McGregor were finished fighting, it was clear that their relationship had not been healed. In fact, given that Khabib jumped over the side of the cage and attacked McGregor's team, things were actually left worse than ever before. And at this stage, with everything that has been said and done, even getting them in the same room for a photo op might be near impossible. And with Khabib happily retired, any chance of a rematch is now dead in the water. So all we have now are the memories. As always, if you guys enjoyed the video, please be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to our channel. Apart from that, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.